as a founder of this only city party which has which is focused only on municipal governance what are you your views on the area sabas and your notions for implementing the same concept first of all thanks kirti bhai for uh, organizing this session happy to be part of this thanks uh, katyani uh, for joining this call and giving us your perspectives on area sabas and i know that you have fought a lot for the implementation of the 74th amendment so we have to be thankful to you for ultimately bringing all these parliaments like ward committee and area sabha into the public uh, eye and thanks somya for moderating this uh, so quickly from my perspective area sabhas while this concept has been around for many many years it's not been implemented by pretty much anybody right at any level Yeah, uh, it's great to see that Bangalore is trying to do that, but I think there's still a long way to go. In Bangalore, there is not even any remote narrative to even think of implementing that. So, as the founder of BNP, one of the first things that I've been very clear about is uh, we want to be a party which is biased towards action. So, one of the first things that I told our team also is that uh, I don't want all these concepts to exist in theory or paper. I also don't want to wait for any of us to get elected as corporators before implementing it. so i said let's go ahead and implement the concept and for that let's assume that we are each of us are corporators in our respective wards if we were the corporator what would we do yes today we don't have the power or the uh, resources in terms of money to implement that but many of the civic issues do not need either power or money to be resolved so i said let's get going with the implementation of area sabhas by playing the role of shadow corporators and that's how many of our team members have now started constituting area sabhas in their respective areas and the concept is very simple from our side in terms of how we are implementing it as mrs kathani said we break the ward down into areas typically a ward will have about uh, 35000 voters or roughly about 50 to 60000 citizens so you'll roughly have about 15000 households so what we do is we typically break the ward down into 10 areas each area will have roughly about 1500 households and there is an interesting interesting concept of neighborhood group that i saw in that i didn't know of that concept but what we are doing is we are having a concept called as a residential community so we are breaking these 15000 households into smaller residential communities comprising 100 houses 200 houses 300 houses uh, it could be an apartment complex with 200 flats it could be a villa community with 300 houses it could be a slum with 500 dwellings it could be a layout of individual houses so any logical agglomeration of anywhere between 50 to 500 houses we take them as a residential community so we will typically have about let's say 10 residential communities in each area it could be plus or minus but roughly 10 so what we are doing is we are trying to identify first of all the residential communities and we are reaching out to these residential communities and from each of these residential communities we are identifying one two or even three people to represent that residential community as an area sabha member and we are constituting these teams and these teams in turn are raising issues on the ground because ultimately there is nothing like uh, issues that are raised from the ground by the local people by local representatives because they are the ones who suffer the most in terms of these issues impacting them so they raise the issues and we have created a system by which we are able to engage with officials and uh, in fact there was an interesting statistic that uh, was put out by our team last uh, about a week back uh, during the month of january through our area sabhas uh, multiple area sabhas that we have constituted across different parts of the city more than 200 issues were raised uh, i think the precise number was 207 uh, and guess what we've been able to resolve close to 100 out of those and to me it gives great joy great pleasure and great pride to say that we've been able to do this so uh area sabhas is a concept that, or area sabha as a concept i didn't want it to be just remaining on paper uh, we have already implemented it in quite a few wards we have lots of team members who are already part of it and through them we are raising more and more issues solving them and of course once we have a corporator elected from bnp uh, the idea is to then get them involved in the whole process of determining what projects are to be done uh, you know recommending that to the ward committees get our corporator to get those uh approved in the uh, bbmp council and subsequently the area sabha is playing an overseeing role in the implementation of the projects so as bnp uh, as a city only party as a party that's focused on action 
I'm very clear that we want to implement this concept, whether we are in power or not. It's a concept that we are committed to. And we are the first party in this country that's actually going ahead and implementing that. Back over to you, Samya. Uh, thanks for that innovative uh, explanation and implementation. Do you think area sabhas can work without the cooperation of state government or even the MLAs? I see, uh, you had sent me some slides. Maybe I should share them now if you wanted to. I'll go ahead and do sure, it. Absolutely. There's a misconception that um, uh, MLAs and the state government will not allow an independent party to work, will not allow corporators to work, uh, and without their cooperation, nothing can happen, etc. So I'll probably take a specific example right in front of my apartment complex. So I'll take that example to articulate how the MLAs have no role to play in municipal governance. And without, forget about they not being cooperating. Even if we have an MLA who is actively working against it, we can still solve for many problems. <laughs> so I live in an apartment complex on Old Madras Road in C.V. Raman Nagar in Bengaluru. Uh, I stay in a place on Old Madras Road, which is a hazardous junction to cross. We had been crying horse for a skywalk to be uh, implemented in front of our apartment for many, many years. Nothing happened as fate would have it. Uh, on one fine day, I think in 2017, a 17-year-old girl who was crossing the road, got run over by a bus and died on the spot. We were all really, really uh, upset about it, very angry about it, because it was a disaster waiting to happen. Then again, we started going to the corporator MLA. Nothing really happened. And finally, we did a protest. And magically, when a, when a protest happens, magically, a budget appears out of thin air. So a budget finally got approved for the skywalk. The work started on both sides of the road. And uh, within a month or two, the work came to a grinding halt. Then we again ran from pillar to post to figure out what was happening. We just couldn't get any answers out of the corporator or the MLA. And finally, we went to the media. And the media covered an article on this Benigan Halley skywalk. And to our shock in that media article, the corporator openly states that you know, the work was started because there was a need for the project, but now the work has been stopped because an influential politician wanted to discuss something with the contractor. On the left side of the screen, you, you actually are seeing a, a news article on this Benigan Ali Skywalk. Uh, you'll not be able to read this, but it actually, in fact, any of you are interested, you can do a Google search on Benigan Ali Skywalk. This Bangalore Mirror article will come up. Here is a corporator who's openly, uh, shamelessly saying that the project has been stopped because a senior politician or an influential politician has stopped the project. And we all know that the influential politician was the MLA. And she being from a particular party, she was given a ticket by the MLA. So she cannot do anything without the uh, approval of that MLA. Uh, so the project didn't move forward. It got stuck for almost one, one and a half years because the MLA refused to approve the project without getting a bribe. And interestingly, the car contractor refused to pay a bribe. So the work was stuck there. One interesting thing that happened uh, in 2020, the term of the BBMP council came to an end, which means the term of the corporator also came to an end. And nodal officers got appointed for each ward. In my ward, we had a, a wonderful official, a person by the name Randeep Dev, who was the solid waste management uh, special commissioner at that time. He's an IAS officer. He took charge as a nodal officer of the ward. And we as citizens, we had constituted an area sabha by that time. So we went and we interacted with uh, the nodal officer and we took up this issue. And he said, I can't approve a new budget, but I said the budget has already been approved. So then he wanted to know why it didn't go through and I gave him the history. He laughed and he put me onto the chief engineer of road infrastructure, Mr. Pralat, who in turn put me onto his team. And guess what? In two months flat, October 2020, we took up this issue. On the right side, you will see that December 2020, the skywalk was completed without a single rupee of bribe paid to the MLA because the MLA had no role to play in this. He was stopping the project because he was controlling the corporator because he was the one who had given the ticket to that corporator to contest and the corporator was not willing to do anything without listening to the MLA. And for us, the biggest learning was if you have a set of committed citizens who are willing to take up issues, and if you're able to work together as a team, and we had constituted the area sabha, and the nodal officer was playing the role of the corporator and still is playing the role of the corporator. If you have a competent and uh, a person with good integrity, 
along with area sabhas, along with the corporator, a lot of things can be done. So that was my practical experience uh, where I was directly involved in getting this skywalk done. And it's not a small project, right? It's not just some garbage that's getting cleared up somewhere. It's a fairly big project and a big project that was stalled deliberately by the MLA wanting a bribe to be paid. And the story had an interesting ending where we actually invited the MLA to come and inaugurate the project. He refused to do it because he didn't get a cut out of it. Mm -hmm. But then we didn't care. We didn't wait for his inauguration. Um, you know, we ensured that no other person dies by crossing the road at that junction. In fact, my daughter herself was uh, going and attending her uh, common law entrance uh, coaching for two years. She used to cross the road with the skywalk, go and take the metro and go to her classes. I was able to breathe easily and allow her to go without having to worry about what's going to happen to her. So that's the power of area, Sabas. That's the power of a practical example of citizens working together with the corporator or the equivalent of the corporator and getting things done. So that's my experience, uh, Soumya. Area Sabas can work. Uh, in fact, can work not just without the cooperation of MLAs or the state government. They can work despite MLAs working <laughs> actively against them. That's my experience. That's inspirational and funny too. Uh, I would like to invite our uh, next panelist, Aparna Chandar. Aparna, your interests are in music and marketing. When would you say you started to pay attention to municipal matters? Please turn your video. Uh, good evening. Yeah, can you see me? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, but please turn your video on as well. Yeah, it's on. Thank you. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to be part of this session. Okay, to answer your question, um, I started getting interested uh, probably about four or five years ago because. Uh, after having lived in my community for more than a decade, I decided to give something back to my community. So I took up a position in the management committee. So while solving internal matters in the community, I also started paying to external, paying attention to external matters. We are road. So we have a private road of about 200 meters uh, that is just in front of our house. So uh, in front of our apartment complex. So it leads to our community. So this was in really bad shape because of, you know, lots of uh, various diggings by uh, various uh, service providers. So this was probably the first time I paid attention to a municipal matter. I mean, obviously, I was also going through the experience of that road uh, constantly. But uh, this, that was the first time I paid attention uh, in a way where I wanted to do something about it. Uh, how long had this issue been a nuisance to your locality? This was a nuisance for uh, almost two years. Oh, so because okay. the, the management committee before me and even independent people from the community had tried to reach out to the BBMP guys, but it was of no use. So basically, they would they were initially promising that they would fix it. You know, every, we in fact multiple residents decided to call independently just to put pressure and all that, but mm -hmm. nothing would happen. They would say they would fix it. And then eventually they'll just uh, stop answering our calls. So how did you, uh, what, what steps did you take then? What did you do next? So I uh, tried contacting the assistant engineer of the BBMP multiple times. I took his number from the estate manager because I felt like, uh, um, you know, I was part of the management committee and I should do something about it. So I, uh, I called him and he said, yes, uh, we will fix it all that and then i would also follow up with photos and videos of the road so initially he was responsive but after some time he started ignoring my calls and you know it would get really worse when it rained and stuff because i mean it was like an accident waiting to happen so uh and during rains it was really bad so i was feeling extremely helpless and this was the time that by chance i attended a meeting organized by bnp so i got to know in this meeting that civic issues can be raised in person in a ward committee meeting. I didn't even know there was something called the ward committee meeting where issues could be raised. So, and that ward committee meetings happen every fortnight. So where, you know, we could go with issues and the BBMP team would have to listen and resolve the issues. So I just decided to do that after that. 
So would you so you solved this single-handedly? You attended a meeting and then was the issue resolved? Yes. Uh it did get resolved. So we um you, I I you uh, by yourself or uh, did you have anybody else's support? No, no, not by myself because I tried myself, right? And nothing happened. Like I thought initially that I could resolve it myself. So I constantly every day I was calling, I was sending photos and videos on WhatsApp, but nothing happened. So um, after going to this BMP meeting and figuring out that there was actually a process, a way to get it sorted, uh, I came, uh, I got a few people interested uh, in our community. So I said, let's just go to the ward committee meeting. And since people were also very frustrated because we had tried all kinds of tactics, nothing had worked. So uh, some 15, 20 of uh, my fellow residents joined me and we went to the ward committee meeting and we met the assistant engineer and we got him to sign an agreement stating that the work would begin in 15 days. Actually, even when we went, uh, they were like uh, hesitant and they were like, oh, this is happening, this is happening, you know, some excuse, but we kind of, but I think the pressure was there because we were so many of us, it was just, it was not one or two persons, right? So it was a whole lot of people just barging in. So uh, they signed it and actually the work began soon after and the road was ready in no time. So this actually was a big eye opener for all of us that, you know, we had finally figured out a way to get things done. So we just needed to come together and solve the problem. So actually this motivated me so much that I took up an active role uh, of being an area sub member of the BNP. That's a nice uh, narrative. So glad to hear that. Uh, we'll go on to the next panelist. Kungode, uh, how long have you been a member of BNP? Is everyone able to see my screen? I, yeah, how long have you been a member of BNP? Good evening, all. It's a great opportunity for me to. Have a great chat with you guys in today's evening. Uh, uh, with BNP, I'm there almost like four years now. Oh, that's a season. I, yeah, I came to know about BNP in 2020, towards mm -hmm. the end of November. And I was going through the BNP website. I read about the ward level project details, which was published in the BNP website. Then I found these are very helpful for the issue I was working on. Then I connected with the BNP team and became a member immediately somewhere in November 2020. So did you feel any issue of you know helplessness when you faced with these issues? Or did you have any plan with the co collaborating with people and getting on with the resolution? Um, yeah, uh, being a civic warrior, like I come across a lot of different civic issues faced by the citizens of our city. Even so in the, would you like me to share one of the slides you have sent me? Yeah, please. Yeah, right. So what exactly happened in this uh, sequence that you have shown here? Ma'am, uh, please share the screen. We are not able to see. Oh, you're not able to see. I thought yeah. I'm... Actually, um, during my walks, I found uh, quite a few black spots in our ward. And then I was uh, connecting with my like-minded citizens and formed area sabha in our ward. And we worked together as a team. We raised these civic issues in the ward committee meeting. Then with support of area sabha members, and we continuously engage with the BBMP, junior health inspectors, supervisors, then we created some awareness programs. Uh, okay. We also kept, keep pushing uh, BBMP to get the area cleaned and uh, streamlined. And these are a few slides where we can see like a, it's a black yeah, spot that's... and we colored it. The walls were painted, clean up the area. And now so the when did this was... work happen? When did you clean up the spot? Uh, this and is in did... 2022. So in two years, you've been able to manage to, you've managed to instill enough awareness so that it's still not a black spot yeah. again. Yes, yes. So today I just visited the place and took the pictures. Okay. To put up the That's nice. It's live and fresh, so to speak. And what is the story of this black spot? Uh, this is a black spot where the 
garbage vehicle transport happens from the smaller trucks to the bigger compartments and yeah. uh, we were against it and we requested the team because it's a main road where the way, way movement of vehicles were large and smells very bad so it was transformed uh, by putting rangoli over there then the team painted so it's a uh, good now so and it's still was... maintained well yes there is yes. the transfer station is moved elsewhere <laughs> what about uh, this uh, this is another black spots like uh, one end of the road there is an apartment where the children come out to for the school bus boarding mm -hmm. and this complete stretches with of garbage where the other side there was a low level houses and the garbage vehicle uh, was not regular and uh, people used to throw the garbages then it was transformed then the next layer the next uh, thing you can see it was painted and uh, the team was worked closely to keep it and check on it and the other picture is taken up today it's we are like this uh, incident was uh, carried out in 21 okay so we took it in the what committee meeting and multiple discussion happened and almost it took like uh, three four months to come to this stage and now yeah it's pretty better yeah, it still seems to be holding up. That's really commendable. You had one more uh, success story. Uh, did you transform any of these spots into something else yes. other so than... Like, yeah, this is another black spot where uh, it became a nursery now. Like uh, the team tried to clean up the garbage regularly, but still it was uh, not an end to it. Okay. Then uh, we got an opportunity to set up a nursery at that place. Then it was like transformed it's very good then this picture also taken today and the other location the same that wall you have seen which was painted there we can see uh, some stalls were put up uh, as soon we painted then we have got some uh, tender coconut stall and there is a lady with the uh, stitching all those stuffs were fixed so these are the ways where uh, can be like uh, once we transform it can be maintained in a long run so how many how many team members would you say worked with you on this? Uh, actually, these locations are from different areas of our groups. It's not right. in overview. Well, that's so great. Area... So you had a cross area collaboration. Yeah, it's a cross area and multiple nice. areas of our groups work for it. And they regularly monitor. And we have a WhatsApp group with the BBMP solid waste management team. Nice. If any issue, they'll be posting on that. So now they resolve your issues quickly. Uh, yeah, in the uh, most of the cases, it gets solved, and you still there are some black spots we'll be continuous working on. Thank you, Pungode. Thank you. Uh, we will now move on to our uh, last panelist, Lalitamba. Uh, Lalitamba is also the campaign lead at uh, Bangalore Navadhan Party. Uh, would you like us to? join you on a journey of how you converted and reclaimed footpaths, whole lakes, etc. This is a very uh, picture intense uh, presentation that she shared with me. Lalita, I'm going to start screen sharing now. Yeah. Can you share it as a larger one? Uh, yes. As a pre presentation? It's sure. Yeah. This is a big story, so it needs a large screen. Yes. Go ahead. Yellarigo Shubha Sanjay and good evening everyone. First of all, thanks for providing me this opportunity to even come and speak about this. I remember uh, BNP was formed in 2019, but in 2020, we had a great energy and I distinctly remember that BNP was promoting the importance of citizen participation at the local levels. We may call it area sabhas then as well. And uh, at that time, the energy among our citizens was very high. So we, the residents uh, in HSR and specific to 24th main uh, area, we united and worked with the BBMP team to transform an unusable footpath of about 300, 350 meters uh, to making it a usable and a walkable one. Along the side, we citizens understood, uh, I didn't even know many of these people. Right, uh, I was staying in this uh, area and this footpath was also about 14 years, it was unused. And it is uh, adjacent to a KPTCL wall. Opposite side, there are uh, multiple apartments in that row. It's a main road of 24th main, etc. But I didn't have any connect with that team. So the power of uh, uh, citizen participation and area sabhas is one classic example here. 
So we went. There was a lot of parthenium that used to cover every monsoon, and nobody bothered. And there were a lot of trees underneath. We could find everything else. People urinating on the wall and all this. So it all started with this citizen activ activism. We said, I don't. Know, I remember distinctly me and another friend, Kamish and Venkatesh. All of us just went and started plucking the parthenium. I don't know. Every apartment that was right opposite to that uh, footpath started joining. We said, okay, for today it is enough, tomorrow it's enough. And this journey, it went on for four weeks. And I think it was around that COVID time itself. People were working from home and a lot of things. And from day one and two, I think uh, we also got the contacts of BBMP and we started working. It was not only removing the parthenium, etc., but working with them, pruning the uh, uh, outgrown branches. And there was so much. Bed, I remember it was also raining in that December 2020. We started this activity somewhere December 3rd and 30th or 31st, we actually celebrated this as well. So we understood the process of working with various agencies like BBMP and you can also see the traffic team around there. There were a lot of unused vehicles, which I will talk about, right? Traffic, BBMP street lights, etc. So Alongside, we also, the transformation was done in about four weeks time. And we also installed two to three exercise equipment you see there. Today also it is there and people use it. It just gives them that uh, space. And we also installed a few benches. I think three or four we had. And people do sit and relax uh, because it's a long stretch of footpath. They still rest there, right? So we also celebrated this moment and... Uh, at that time, BBMP special commissioner was Mr. Randi Pichrikan mentioned. We invited him. He was so happy to see this particular transformation. And you see the left uh, says before and the right one says after, right? That was the transformation that we used. Idea was, idea was to clean it up, make it usable and walkable. Simple as that, right? It was a, a nigh opening uh, event that uh, actually happened in 2020 December. And along with that, we also conducted an awareness campaign regarding pet poop on the road. We did it for two days and we started encouraging people to carry poop picker whenever they step out so that our, our roads are clean. I see the one after the next day in that picture, that person actually got the poop picker. I'm sure that message, whoever it reaches, uh, I think they will also become responsible and help us in keeping our areas clean. Yeah. Moving on next, with the same energy that we had, we extended our activity next uh, to uh, the 27th cross in HSR layout. Uh, this time it was, uh, this road as well has multiple uh, uh, apartment complexes, I think 12 or 13 communities, etc. And uh, uh, this time it was to beautify the entire street and the wall that we see. Citizens again unitedly, here as well, I didn't know many people at all. Uh, one or here and there I knew, but the energy that we used to have, this again was about a four-week uh, activity that we had. BBMP team came, enormous support that we got. You see on the left-hand side how it was before. Alongside, uh, we also, see this was I think day two. On the right-hand side, you see citizens sitting. It was day two, I believe, where we all sat and took a picture. And uh, we culminated that entire, uh, this one, uh, the, uh, in, the wall was painted, as you see, and it is it looks good today as well. It is as is. Uh, and we I call proudly this road as Wall of 27 because it's 27th cross. That's the nickname I have given. So four weeks of efforts, it was culminated by celebrating Republic Day uh, function together. Otherwise, community celebrates these national festivals on their own, in their own communities. But this event actually got everybody together. I remember uh, standing for the national anthem that we sang, etc. High energy was in the air. In all this process, what I also, we uh, worked with BBMP streetlights team because there were so many dark spots. We got few streetlights installed and also few vehicles, specifically on 27th cross, there were few vehicles which were abandoned for more than a year or two. And when we called people, right, uh, we said, okay, we divided the task. Okay, a few of these people will follow up on uh, finding the owner along with the help of the traffic police and law and order, etc. 
can you believe within a week's time we were able to trace the owners and either they took or the at that time towing was there they towed those vehicles so this was one more classic example as we speak that entire area that road has an area sabha right it has united the citizens and the power of area sabha is excellent moving on third one that i would like to uh, highlight is the making of an urban forest called sundaravana uh it was also in the beginning of uh, jan february 2021 the energy with the examples uh, and energy that we had with citizen participation i think we had learnt a lot four acres of somsundarpalya lake was being used by the adjacent compost plant which is also called as kcdc and a uh, lot of waste was being dumped you can see the picture there that is the lake land four acres and uh, many of our citizens of this area we worked with official to get the mountains of uh, plastic removed so basically you we had heap of mountains that was to be reduced to ground zero that is something along with officials and uh, the local mlas everybody worked and got it removed the next was kcdc handed over that particular land to uh, the lakes team that was the start where we said okay with the experience of the earlier examples that we have cited citizens as we as citizens were determined to transform this plastic land into an urban forest we really wanted to see lot of greenery around so we worked first thing was we worked with the swm team to get as much plastic removed from the land soumya can you go back to the previous screen you will see that citizens were working and see these were yeah. the plastic land people but uh, there is there was bbmp team etc working and untiring efforts of about 180 days we started plantation we didn't because the more and more we started digging in this area where there was plastic 10 feet down there was plastic so we started working our own motto was to make it greener so but as we moved along after 5 6 months of effort we also realized that we needed an organization which could help us in uh, planting and managing in such larger areas and you see in the previous uh, slide soumya yeah, we had made a postcard and we said we meet every day at 730 that was the standard this one what when do we meet every day we meet on the top and uh, next if you go people would come we would do some work but it was uh, join us every day in the making of urban forest that is sundaravana so finally um the citizen organization we had was community task force and uh, hsr rotary worked with an organization which helped in creating the miyawaki forest thousands today uh, then in 2022 uh, sometime in february march thousands of saplings of various native species were planted and uh, it's been now two years and each of them have grown at few Uh, feet tall or at least 10 feet 20 feet etc depending on the this one right so this is a view and this is where i am so proud to say and I'll, as part of our team sundaravana dream comes true whenever you visit hsr please do come to soma sundarapalya lake and see our sundaravana and together we also celebrate various occasions like uh, sankranti deepavali and other uh, festivals we have uh, created small small pots called uh, spots called tapovana where we can actually it's a bamboo uh, a lush bamboo green area there so you can sit and relax in the morning then we have created kutira a small place where you can sit and rest so small small things that we all have done together i think the citizen participation and energy is at high and i think area sabhas do play a very important role in all this thank you so much that was a very striking example of the number of people the sheer number of people you seem to have moved is amazing and unbelievable so shrikant would you summarize some key takeaways maybe on how citizen involvement can now transform neighborhoods in a way i think uh, the story spoke for themselves i would think yeah yeah <laughs> isn't it right true but see um when i started bnp for me the vision was very simple the dream was very simple uh, i'm here looking to make bengaluru the best city in the world that is and that is not my vision my dream it's actually nada prabhu kempegowda's vision and dream the founder of bengaluru 
somewhere we lost our way completely somewhere corruption took over incompetence took over inefficiency took over apathy took over indifference took over and today i don't know about other cities but bengaluru is in a terrible terrible shape and for me the only way to bring about change uh, is by involving citizens uh, of course we have to be in power uh, we will uh, you know we are in, i got this registered as a political party and we want to contest elections because a fundamental change can be brought about i would say only by being in power but that alone will not be enough but every now and then when i see the high court of karnataka issuing an order to bbmp asking them to give a status report on all the potholes and asking them to fix everything i actually in a way i don't know whether to laugh or to cry bengaluru has 14000 kilometers of roads assuming that we even deploy 1000 officials 1000 officials if we deploy each one has to manage 14 kilometers of roads you know these guys will take years and years to whether to even figure out where the potholes are and how to fix them so i don't even know what the you know i might be uh, sort of uh, uh, taken to task for contempt of court or whatever but i'm saying i don't know what the high court is thinking and bbmp every time gives promises to the high court saying that yeah we will set right all the potholes how is it possible the only way it can be sorted out is citizens of the city in their respective localities take the responsibility for their own locality and if we start identifying more and more people from the local residential communities involve them in the process all of these examples that you are seeing right none of them were in politics or none of them were involved in issues at this magnitude but the moment people come together people know that something can be done my objective is to bring people together and for making our city better our locality is beautiful to get things done area sabha as a concept you know i'm not uh, you know waiting to get into power i am not a believer that uh, you know if the system hasn't worked in the past it will never work we have to start somewhere i started small in 2019 today there's a huge army of citizens that i've been able to build every time i see these visuals i see the team talking about the work they have done it gives me goosebumps it shows me every passing day that if we as citizens come together under this political umbrella uh, under the concept of area sabhas and we are able to do this together i'm very confident that in the not too distant future we'll be able to make bengaluru the best city in the world so that's my dream that's my vision or rather the vision of nada prabhu kempe gowda that i want to implement along with the rest of the team bringing everybody together today we have area sabhas in probably about 20 wards or so right there are 225 wards in bengaluru uh, so 20 25 wards is a small step but i think it's a very important step uh, i would think that uh, you know i would like to take the quote of neil armstrong when he stepped on the moon uh, a small step for man a giant leap for human kind i would say it's a small step taken by bnp but i think it's a huge step a huge leap in municipal governance that we are taking and watch out for more we are here to stay we are here for the long run we are here with the simple mission of making bengaluru the best city in the world through the concept of areas